his or her uh, brain waves are analyzed. The noise is eliminated by computer. One finds almost an identical potential, mm -hmm. electric potential, in uh, the brain waves of this person. So how was electrical activity transferred from one brain to the other without any electromagnetic connection? This is the mystery. Yeah. Mystery is solved by saying that there, ha there is a connection, but it's non-local. It does not require any signal. Yes, that's fascinating. Now, in the 70s, there was a craze about uh, manifesting, and even still today with the films like The Secret, but you say that consciousness does not choose in the ordinary state of consciousness, but comes from non-local consciousness. Yes. I think we can clear this up for our listeners, because I think they're still in the stage of manifesting from the ego. <laughs> yes. I think this is why uh, the secret is a bit too simplistic. Yes. And obviously, um, it doesn't quite work. Uh, we have tried to make it work in the 70s, and now when The Secret come out, came out as a very successful book and a very successful movie, I know many people tried to manifest, you know, egotistic things like a house or a car or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, but it doesn't really uh, work. Uh, mm -hmm. Why not? Because we are asking in our ego. It's not in the ego consciousness that you can use choice. But uh, on, the, on their credit, though, uh, The Secret makes a very good point. If you want to manifest uh, from the choice of non-local consciousness something in our life, it is still a better strategy uh, than only that do-do-do approach that uh, we tend to take. It is a better strategy to mix doing with also just sitting, just waiting, waiting mm -hmm. for, the, uh, for what you are looking for to come to us. Mm -hmm. Now, this idea is good. There is an attractor effect. But what is attracted to us are not material things. What is attracted to us are the archetypes of thought, such as love, beauty, justice, truth, goodness. Those things are, uh, are definitely attracted to us when we allow ourselves to both do and be mm -hmm. with the intention that we manifest love in our life, with the intention that we manifest goodness, beauty, all that in our life. Then there are really... Um, is a manifestation of this uh, wonderful uh, stuff yeah. in our life which enriches life and makes life uh, worth it. Yes, absolutely. Now, you mentioned a message that you received during a period of lucid dreaming or in the hypnagogic state that the Tibetan Book of the Dead is correct and it's your job to prove it. Do you feel you've done this, Dr. Goswami? Well, I think that um, when I wrote uh, Physics of the Soul, I was able to do it, and um, it, was, uh, it was a very nice experience writing this, uh, that chapter. I think it's the chapter 8 of the book where I describe the modified journey of the soul uh, through the bardos, mm -hmm. and um, I used all, the, all what quantum physics has taught me all those insights of quantum physics to describe that journey. Mm. And, and it, it, it was a wonderful experience for me because I was in flow. So I hope um, the listener will look up the book Physics of the Soul and read Chapter 8 and, and judge for yourself. I mean, I was absolutely super turned on in writing that chapter because here is Tibetan Book of the Dead, which has always intrigued me ever since I read it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that particular day when I wrote that chapter, I finally felt that, yes, uh, I have carried out the admonition of the dream. It's your job to prove it. Yes, here it is. We have proven that Tibetan Book of the Dead is correct. That's wonderful. I remember in the film that you were asked by a woman, what happens to us after we die? So this is all connected with the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Yes. Uh, you know, I first came across Tibetan Book of the Dead uh, because um, Ram Das, the celebrated spiritual guru of the 70s and uh, 80s uh, in this country, because Ram Das wrote about Tibetan Book of the Dead because many of the psychedelic experiences of his genre mm. uh, were very much like the experiences of Tibetan Book of the Dead. So I became curious and read it, but I really could not get into it when I first read it. Mm. But later, when this woman uh, asked that question of what happens to people when they die, and I didn't know anything about it, I didn't know even where to begin, 
then I uh, looked at the Tibetan Book of the Dead once again, and, and unfortunately still looked very obscure. So it mm. took about um, a year before I could even get into it, and that's when I had that dream. Uh, I took it extremely seriously and formed a study group and uh, eventually broke through the basic ideas that produced the work of physics of the soul. So that's interesting. That a lady started you on that path of that research. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, that is my experience. I mean, it is also other people's experience. Uh, creativity is often triggered mm -hmm. by um, such uh, complete innocent questions. Uh, uh, they are the events of synchronicity yes. that uh, runs our life. In mm -hmm. other words, a creative person has made a choice of not being run by um, what, uh, um, you know, ordinary uh, people uh, run by, which is that you um, have desires and you have intentions to live your life and make accomplishments and stuff, and, and, and you run life through your desires and desires for success and accomplishment. Creative people uh, listen to a different drummer altogether. Yes. They wait for events of coincidence, mm -hmm. uh, and then only. That definitely makes sense. Now, can you tell us what you're doing currently? I am working with uh, some of these institutes, like Holmes Institute, Philosophical Research University, mm. International University, Quantum University for Integrative Medicine. And the objective here is that you know, we are trying to educate people with the new science paradigm. The one idea of science, quantum activism, a strong idea, is that, you know, in spite of the fact that we now have some definitive answers to the question of is there God, a good theory with a lot of data to support these ideas, but still we cannot get materialists to um, listen to us very much. I mean, mm -hmm. they just uh, believe in benign neglect. I mean, they don't even engage. Okay. So um, one of the ideas of quantum activism is to build public opinion so much so that the force of public opinion and of course um, public opinion also will bring us uh, maybe government support of the research which will produce further applications and so eventually the weight of public opinion plus these applications the technologies built on this spiritual paradigm will be so heavy yeah. that the materialist paradigm will crash that's the idea so from that point of view, yes, we, um, we do a lot of work with any organization which teaches these things um, to people so that they become quantum activists, and then they propagate the idea that, look, time for examining a new paradigm has come, time for bringing God and the values that we cherish, love, beauty, justice, truth, goodness, etc., mm -hmm. in our lives, and, and let's uh, put some pressure on uh, people in power to change our social systems accordingly. So I, and I'm, I'm now working very hard on developing a spiritual economics. Oh, that's wonderful. Absolutely. There is a tremendous interest now. Yeah, I um, hope so. Oh, yes, there is. Now, for my last question, Dr. Goswami, what do you see for the future of humanity? Well, um, I think it is, it, is, it is very brilliant. I mean, the, I really think that we'll have the capacity eventually. Um, it might be a change in a superhuman species, but um, we will have the capacity to delve into the supramental archetypes, love, beauty, justice, truth, goodness, etc., in such an unprecedented way that we cannot even imagine it today. Mm. That's mm. what I think is the long-term prospect of our evolution. But in the short term, I, I know what uh, consciousness is leading us to. Uh, you know, we have gone through, this is the age of the mind. We are developing evolution of the mind. So first we had physical mind, looking at physical objects, give meaning to them. Then we gave meaning to feelings, but that was never completed properly because we moved into the next stage, rational thinking, thinking about thinking itself too fast, without integrating the idea of feeling. And uh, what happened was that um, this uh, division of feeling and thinking, this lack of synchrony between feeling and thinking, is preventing us from getting to the next stage of the mind, which is the uh, uh, 
meaning of intuition, studying the meaning of intuition, this love, beauty, justice, truth, those things. Mm. And we have, we have been doing it to some extent through individual efforts, but collectively we are falling short. We are still very violent. Mm. We are still uh, very much into good evil split. Um, we are not doing a good job of integration. So my hope, and the uh, science is pointing, um, pointing to this, is that we will be able to integrate these um, negative emotional aspects of feelings with positive emotional aspects of feelings, so much so that it will free us towards the study of the intuitive domain of the mind. Thank you very much. Now, Dr. Goswami, can you give us your website for our listeners? Yes, um, the website is Amit Goswami, A-M-I-T-G-O-S-W-A-M-I, one word, dot org. Thank you very much for being with us today. It was a great privilege talking with you. And perhaps you'll come back in the future to guide us a little further on our path. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for asking me. Oh, thank you. Now, for reviews on Dr. Goswami's books, please visit www.merlionnews.com. This is Merrin Jose, and thank you for listening to merlionpodcast.com.